Hey guys, welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner. We are covering Sergey Lane's Basic Mathematics, and this is the final section on some analytical geometry, right? And this section is a little bit long. Uh, it is one that you can skip. I don't recommend skipping this one. This one's a lot of fun. This is really interesting. Okay, so he starts off, he says, note that when we have the graph y squared minus x squared is equal to one, okay? Um, or more generally c, right? These equations produce a graph that are very similar to the graph x, y is equal to 1, except it's rotated, right? And his question is, why is that? Why does that do that? Well, he has a theorem. Theorem 1 of section 12. He says, let h be the set of points x, y, uh, satisfying the equation x, y equals 1. Let g be a rotation of pi over 4 degrees, right? counterclockwise as usual, then the image of H under G, so H through G is going to be the, the, is the curve H prime, which is the uh, UV points satisfying U squared minus, I'm sorry, V squared minus U squared is equal to two, okay? And he has a little picture that you can look at. I'll draw the picture for you really quick. This is X, X my equals one, and this is the graph uh, x squared, y, v squared minus u squared is equal to two, okay? All right, let's do the proof. So we start with rotation. Remember the rotation, we have the matrix, we have cosine of theta, minus sine of theta, and then we have sine of theta and cosine of theta. Oh man, so much fun. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna apply this to pi over four degrees through the point x, y, okay? Okay, so what's that, what, that, what is that gonna give us? Well, x times cosine of theta is going to be root of two over two, and then it's gonna be uh, x minus root of two over two y, and then root of two over two x plus root of two over two y, okay? And then he is going to say that these new points is going to equal u, and I'm sorry, v. I didn't need to put a line there. Okay, I don't have y dot either. Um, so he has this, so he writes this equation out this way. So he says u is equal to, and he changes it to one over root of two. He's just multiplying the top and the bottom by root of two over two, root of two over root of two. And he has one over two, one over root of two x minus y, and v is equal to one over root of two x plus y, okay? If we were to take v squared minus u squared, what is that gonna equal? Well, that's gonna be one half times x minus y squared minus one half times x plus y squared. And doing a little bit of algebra, one half times x squared minus two xy plus y squared minus one half times x squared plus two xy plus y squared. I know it's hard to read there, okay. So we distribute these out. We get a one half x squared minus one half x squared. That turns out to be zero. We get a one half x squared minus, minus, so we're gonna get uh, minus two xy. And then we're gonna get a one half y squared minus one half y squared. And that's gonna, these two terms are gonna cancel. Okay, there we go. Okay, what is xy equal to? It's equal to one. So this is equal to minus two. Okay, and that is how he proved that rotating the hyperbola will give you this equation, okay? Uh, let's try going backwards. What happens if we start with x, y? So we um, have, a, he, he says, let, let, let's let p prime is equal to a point u comma v such that u squared, no, v squared minus u squared is equal to two. And then we're gonna do P prime is equal to rotation of the point P. P is equal to X, Y, obviously. And uh, satisfying that. So we can rotate UV through an angle of minus pi over four degrees, right? So what would that matrix look like? So rotating by minus pi over four degrees. Well, cosine is going to be the same. Sine, however, flips sine. So we're gonna get sine of pi over four. And then we're gonna get minus sine over here, and cosine is gonna be the same. 
Okay, so we're going to rotate x, y through these coordinates. Okay, is that x, y? Hold on, does he do? No, he does u, v, u and v. So we get u times. Uh, this is one over root of two, obviously. So one over root of two u plus v, and then 1 over root of 2, u minus, no, minus u plus v, okay? All right, and then we take the product of this xy, so we're going to say that's equal to xy, okay? We take the product of that, so x times y is equal to, well, this 1 over root of 2 times 1 over root of 2 is just going to be 1 half, and then we're going to have u plus v, times u minus, or minus u plus v. So we're going to get minus u squared plus v squared times one half. Okay, so xy is equal to that times one half. So we can rewrite that as two xy is equal to v squared minus u squared. And that proves what we set out to do. Okay. Um, There's a remark in here, he says, what if we had xy is equal to 6, right? We didn't have xy is equal to 1, we had xy is equal to 6. In which case, we can kind of rewrite this as x over root of 6 times y over root of 6 is equal to 1, okay? And then we just take x prime is equal to x over square root of 6, and y prime is equal to y over square root of 6. And then we can proceed as follows, and we will get the equation v squared minus u squared um, is equal to 2 times the root of 6 squared, okay? So he would call this factor r like a scaling factor, and that is what you would get after you did that, okay? Uh, and one more example. So we have v squared minus u squared is equal to 18. Let's say this is uh, rotation by pi over 4 of the hyperbola defined by the equation x, y is equal to 9. Okay? So we're just taking this and we're dividing by 2 to get this one or taking that one and multiplying it by 2. Uh, the same thing, the v squared minus u squared is equal to 10. That's just x, y is equal to 5. Okay? There is, oh, what are we doing when we have a v squared minus u squared equals 10, okay? Well, if we were to divide both sides by everything by 10, we get v squared over 10 minus u squared over 10 equals 1, right? And you might be tempted to say, well, this is just v squared scaled down by root of 10, but it's really not. This is v over root of 10 times a squared minus u over the square root of 10 squared. So you have to scale by the root of 10 because these are squares and those aren't. That is all there is to this, really. Um, there's a, a couple of problems here to play around with this idea and this concept, but you can see how even with rotation, well, certain rotations make simple equations. Other rotations don't have very simple rotations uh, equations. But you can see how we can introduce sine and cosine into these uh, analytic equations to produce new graphs that are rotated one way or the other. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Have a great day. Take care, and bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video on Sergey Lang's Basic Mathematics. You can find the series on the left, and on the right, you can click to support my channel. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.